G'day guys, welcome back to the Devon Too Good Investing channel. Today in this video, we're going to be analyzing Micron and we're going to be breaking down its business and then we're going to be doing a valuation to see if it's worth our attention. So before we get into it guys, make sure you like this video and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So essentially Micron is a memory chip manufacturer and they make two types of memory chips. The first one being DRAM and the second one being NAND. So DRAM makes up approximately 75% of their revenue, whereas NAND makes up about 25% of their revenue. And what makes Micron really interesting is that they operate within a oligopoly in the memory chip uh, industry. Pretty much there's only three main competitors, well, there's only three main companies that make memory chips in the world, one being Samsung, one being SK, and one being Micron. And SK and Samsung are both South Korean companies and Micron is the only company out in the West. So that almost gives them, you know, they, they pretty much control the market out in the West. Historically, Micron has been a very cyclical company where they go through boom and bust cycles. However, because some of these companies in the industry have realized, hey, like this is an oligopoly. We don't need to keep oversupplying the market. We don't need to keep destroying shareholder shareholder value for ourselves. And because of that, you, we're seeing a lot more supply side constraint within the industry in general. And along with that, we're getting a lot of growing demand for memory chips. And it's coming through a variety of uh, different ways. One of the main ways is data centers and data center revenue actually grew 70% year over year. And we can see a lot of companies investing into things like cloud storage and into upgrading their, their IT infrastructure. And we can see that through companies like Amazon putting huge capital expenditures into their cloud business. We can see that through Microsoft and they're getting extremely high growth rates and the special thing about Micron is that they pretty much get a cut of any uh, memory chips that are used within data centers. And because they are the only uh, Western player, they are usually the first choice for any Western company. There's also going to be uh, tailwinds in terms of PC and graphics. So recently there's been GPU shortages and that has sort of been a headwind against uh, Micron. But as these supply chain issues start to ease, we should see the flip side happen and we should see a lot of pent up demand for for new PC builds and that sort of thing. So with new, new PC builds comes more, with, with pretty much every PC you need memory chips. So the more PCs that are built and bought, the more Micron memory chips that are going to be uh, purchased as well. And then there's also another large tailwind with the shift to uh, 5G away from 4G. And the great thing about that is that 5G phones use 50% more DRAM and double the, amount, double the amount of NAND compared to 5G phones. So we should see that tailwind push more into the future because... I still feel like most of us still have 4G phones and most of us haven't even upgraded to 5G yet. There's also another tailwind with EVs. So auto revenue growth, it grew 25% year over year, but we should, you know, with, with these EVs, particularly with uh, the Teslas, <laughs> they're pretty much computers on wheels. And what do computers need? Well, they need memory chips and... They're going to need a lot more memory chips than what they needed in the past with higher capacity. So this will be a tailwind moving forward. And then also in the industry, in the industrial sector, they saw 80% year over year growth. And what we're seeing now in factories is companies are wanting to automate their processes and they're also wanting to, they're also paying a lot of attention to things like uh, security systems, particularly cyber security. And yeah, this is expected to keep growing in the future. So this is another tailwind for Micron in terms of demand. And if we flip to this slide here, they give an industry outlook. And I mainly want to pay attention to the 
long-term outlooks here. So long-term, they're expecting DRAM, bit demand growth, CAGR to be in mid to high teens. And then long-term NAND, bit demand growth, CAGR to be approximately 30% which is exactly sort of what we want to see if you're interested in Micron. We want to see that demand staying high, especially since it is a commodity uh, sort of uh, commoditized business. And as long as they can uh, manage supply, then there should be a great opportunity here. And we can see that they are investing in the range of $11 billion to $12 billion in CapEx in 2022. And this might scare a lot of people because they might be thinking, oh, well, you know, Micron's spending all this on CapEx. They're going to oversupply the market. But a lot of this money is actually going to go into R&D. And the benefit of that is it means that they're going to be able to produce faster chips. They're going to be able to increase the barrier to entry because they're going to create new IP and new patents. And this should slow down their, well, not slow down their competitors, but put their competitors further behind and increase the barrier of entry into the uh, memory chip market. Now, if we move on to valuation for Micron, I think a very useful metric for valuation we can use is price to book value per share. And that's what I've got up here. So as you can see, Micron is very cyclical and through bear markets, it will trade at you know, around one price to book. And when you're in like sort of bull markets, you can see that it will trade, you know, let's call it around three. You know, we can see here that it almost got up to four, but we can see on this bull market here, you know, it got just above three. And then sort of during these sort of bear cycles here, you know, it's trading about one and or why it's useful is you can almost think of a one price to book as roughly its replacement value. And the reason why replacement value is important is companies like Micron, they have big barriers to entry. And for another company to come out and build a foundry, that's going to cost them about $10 billion. And it will take them at least five years for them to build the foundry and make it efficient so it can compete in the market. So... That's essentially what you're paying for when you pay one price to book. But anything above that is then what you're paying for in terms of earnings. So when the company is earning a bunch of money, you, you should be expecting to pay one and a half price to book, two price to book, or even up to three price to book. And at the moment, it's trading at about 1.9 price to book. And I personally believe this is quite a low multiple for Micron to be trading at considering its mean over the last 10 years is about 1.86 times price to book. So I would argue right now that Micron's business is looking a lot stronger than what it has on average over the last say 10 years. And I think a more fair sort of price to book would be closer to three given that there's a lot of tailwinds for uh, demand growth moving into the future. Also, the company, you know, the, the cycles are going to be less rough because the companies within the industry are starting to learn how to execute on supply side restraint. So you add that on with that three cash flow and the share buybacks, it makes Micron seem very attractive. So if you have a look at my valuation here, what I've done is I've taken the analyst estimate for book value per share over the next three years, so 2023, 2024, and 2025. And then I've added a, I think it's a fairly conservative future price to book ratio for Micron of two. And as I said, I think it deserves to be trading closer to three. If, and at a minimum higher than two but i'm going to be conservative for this uh estimation and that gives us a price target in august of 2023 of 111 dollars, and that gives us a, a CAGR of 27 percent and so that would be a 27 percent per year return over the next one and a half years if we take the book value per share analyst estimate for 2024 
you can see that it's 67 uh, dollars per share of book value and that gives us a price target of 135 dollars and a 25 percent CAGR over the next two and a half years and then if we take a book value per share in 2025 of 79.5 slap on our future price book ratio of two that gives us a price target of $159 and a CAGR of 23%. Now, if we be a bit more bullish and add our price to book of three, so let's go ahead and add that now. You can see that this drastically changes our return. And you can see over the long term, this should get us a CAGR of 38% annually, which is just incredible. So, Pretty much the risk is that Micron um, oversupplies the market or the competitors oversupply the market and that leads to a drop in the price of memory chips. If that happens, well, then this outcome probably won't happen and we'll likely go down something close to uh, one price of book here. So you can see over the long term... Yeah, you, you'll lose you know, money if you're only willing to wait one and a half years. You'll lose 5% if you wait two and a half years and then you'll break even after three and a half years. However, this sort of uh, outcome seems unlikely and I think that honestly somewhere between a price of book between two and three is probably the most likely outcome here. But even if this bad outcome happens, you know, you're not going to lose too much on the downside by the looks of things. However, it seems that if the strong demand continues and they can be disciplined with supply, it looks like there is very high upside for anyone willing to be patient and have a strong head. But anyway, guys, make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe and have a good one. See ya.